Hello again, everybody. Zack Attack is here with its act line for Wednesday, February the 13th, 2013. Of course, pre Valentine's Day. Uh, I hope everyone has a good Valentine's Day tomorrow. I probably won't be making an act line Valentine's Day, probably, but we'll see what happens. But uh, if I do, but don't, happy pre Valentine's Day. You know, I don't have one. Uh, Alright, let's kick off this uh, attack line with the entertainment news portion. Kicking off with the Billboard number ones. What we ever do number one Billboard album? The top 200 album new number one is Josh Roman with his new album Brave. I forgot the name of his album, but I know he's number one first. I think he's had like multiple number ones in the past. I think his Christmas album was number one. I think it's like his second or third number one album. So congrats to Josh Corbin ending the one week reign of Justin Bieber's album Believe Acoustic. But we have a still number one single, however, in the Hot 100. As, yes, Macklemore Thrift Shop remains number one for a fourth week in a row. So congrats to your number ones in the albums and singles of the Hot 100 and Top 200. And I think your country number one, I think it's the band Perry still, with Benedict too. I haven't talked about country number ones in a while. Speaking of country, two award shows announced nominations today. First, the Academy of Country Music Awards announced their nominations today at a press conference. Leading the airwaves, leading the nominations with seven. Same number as he did at the CMAs, Eric Church nominated for Best Male Vocalist, Song and Single of the Year for Springsteen, Amber of the Year for Chief, and also nominated for v Video of the Year for Creeping, but that won't be presented until later. So congrats to him with those nominations, but also lead the pack with I think uh, the other big nominee is Taylor Swift. She's got five nominations, including a full consecutive for Entertainer of the Year. She has won Entertainer of the Year for the last two years at the ACMs. She could win it for the third year. She will be going up against Brooke Shelton, his calls Luke Bryant and his wife Miranda Lambert, Blake's wife Miranda, and also Jason L. D. Taylor also receives nominations for female vocalist, along with Miranda, Carrie, who a woman has a feud with, but Carrie denies it, Martina, Casey Musgraves as a prize category nominee, and Martina. And Taylor will be also be nominated for Album of the Year for Wed. As I mentioned, Eric Church's album's nominated Chief. Both him and Taylor will be going up against Blown Away by Carrie Underwood, Hill Gates and Tan Lines by Luke Bryan, and LBT Little Big Tail with Tornado. LBT also is up for Best Group of the Year, up against Lady and Develop, The Band Perry, Eli Young Band, and ZBB Zachman Band. And Pontoon, which did win Single Record of the Year, will be going up against Springsteen for that, along with Wanted by Hunter Hayes, Over You, Miranda Lambert, and Even If He Breaks Your Heart by Eli Young Band. Speed up over you and won Song of the Year at the CMAs. Will it win at the ACMs as well? It'll be up for that along with Spring Again. A Woman Like You from Eli from Lee Bryce. Even if you breaks your heart from Eli Young Band and Wanted Hunt to Hurts. And the best new artist this year is a combination of the winner for best new male, new female, and best vocal duo. As fiancés, Brantley Gilbert and Jana Kramer will collide with each other along with Florida Georgia Line for the combined Best New Artist. Presented by Coles and GAC. Uh, vocal duo, we got Thompson Square, who won it last year. Surprisingly, they'll be defending it against Sugarland, who's on hiatus. Uh, two up-and-coming groups that have been having a great year with their one hits. Florida Georgia Line and Love and Theft, and the returning Third and Witch. Once again, the Entertainer of the Year will be fair and voted, it will begin on March 25th. New artists will also begin that same day voting. And voting starts tomorrow for an award show that's clearly voted on by the fans. Or in this case, kids. <sighs> yep, the Kids' Choice Awards announces their nominees today. The, whole, the show to be hosted by Josh Dumel will be on the day of March 23rd. At 8 o'clock. Now, like I said, voting begins tomorrow. Now, when it comes to musical categories, Taylor Swift is also nominated for the Teen Choice as well as ACMs. 
she'll be going up for Best Female Artist, along with Pink, Katy Perry, and Adele. Probably she'll win because it's fan voted. Bieber will probably win Best Male, going up against Bruno, Blake Shelton, and Usher. Well, for Best Song for the Kids' Choice, you got Call Me Baby, Carly Rae Jepsen, Taylor Swift going up against her ex, Harry Styles of 1D, with What Makes You Beautiful against hers, We'll Never Ever. But Best Music Group, last year, I was like, why the hell is Toby Keith nominated? Same for this year, an odd bar nominee for Best Music Group, as we got Big Time Wash, One of These Things Doesn't Belong, we got BTR, Big Time Wash, 1D, Maroon 5, and Bon Jovi. Yes, Bon Jovi up for a fucking Kids Choice Award. I'm not, sorry I said fucking in front of kids, but come on. Bon Jovi, kids don't even know who the hell Bon Jovi are. Well, it doesn't matter what D's gonna win anyway. So it's like, it doesn't matter who they put in there. One Direction's going to win. Because like I said, it's a fan voting thing. Uh, when it comes to movies, of course, we got the big time nominees for that. We got Spider Man, Avengers, Die Whippy Kid, and Hunger Games. Now, Hunger Games will probably win Teen Choice, but Kids Choice, probably not. Uh, we got, of course, the Kids Choice, Best Movie Actor. We got Johnny Depp, Andrew Garfield, Zach Gordon, who the hell he is, and Will Smith. And, uh,. Then we got, of course, like, even the Rock's nominated for Best Butt Kicker. I think last year, Kelly Kelly was up for FEMA Butt Kicker, but lost. Surprisingly, the was not even nominated for that, with the exception of the Rock. Nominated for his role in Journey 2. Uh, TV-wise, of course, same old, same old, but the TV. You got Disney against Nickelodeon shows. You got Good Luck Charlie and Wizards of Waverly Place in its last season from Disney against I Call It Victorious from Nickelodeon. Best reality, we got America's Got Talent, AI, The Voice, and Wipeout. So, uh, then we got Selena's going up for the last TV actress nod. So, that's all the nominees for the Kids' Choice Awards. We had April on uh, March 23rd. Kids' Choice on that day, hosted by Josh Dumel, Fuggy's husband. And, of course, the ACMs, hosted by Blake Shelton and Luke Bryan, will take place on April 7th. Or, as I like to call it, WrestleMania Sunday. Now, speaking of country, I mentioned the country awards presented today. Now, there's going to be a lot of festivals in Michigan a lot this year. Uh, Metallica is supposed to have the Hawaiian Festival at Belle Isle. That's to be announced. The downtown holdout, of course, happening once again. But this year, a brand new festival is going to be at Michigan. In Brooklyn, Michigan. Near Michigan International Speedway. As Live Nation announced this week that a brand new country festival called the Fast on Horses Festival will be on its way to MIS on July 19th to the 21st. Now, they had an MI Fest in 2011, but now they got this new festival coming to MIS presented by Live Nation. But the weekend, which is my, my dad's birthday weekend, July 19th to the 21st, it's the same weekend as a huge other big festival in Ohio, Jamboree in the Hills. You got Toby Keith signed up for that, Dwight Yoakam, we the land, but... So who knows who they're going to get for this Festival Horses Festival, which lineup will be announced this forthcoming Monday, February 18th. So there you go. New festival on its way to Michigan. Then we got a lot, a lot of, a lot of tour news. Starting with JT, Justin Timberlake. Now this Sunday, he was the talk of the Grammys with his decent performance. He has said to a lot of people he is touring this year, or at least sometime to promote his album. Well, now the rumors are saying that he's going to do a big headlining tour with his suit and tie collaborator, Jay-Z. According to many sources, JT is set to go on a 10 to 13 stadium tour with Jay-Z, with a 10-piece band. According to several, like I said, several sources are saying that they're going on this big tour. So, like I said, nothing's been confirmed by anybody in JT or Jay-Z's camp. So, we'll see if it's true or not. But we all know JT's touring. But will he tour with Jay-Z? Time will tell. Now, while JT's rumored the tour, Bruno Mars is definitely touring. Coming off his Grammy performance this past Sunday with Sting and Rihanna and the Molly, the Audubon Molly, 
Bruno Mars announced yesterday on Allen the cities, no dates or venues though, for his upcoming Moonshine Jungle Tour. Set to be in the summertime, like I said, no specific dates yet, but a lot of cities including Houston, New York, Detroit. It'll be touring with Ely Golding on select dates, so we'll probably find out the full itinerary soon of Bruno's tour. But at least we know Bruno is going to be in this Detroit area. While Bruno is coming to Detroit and other cities on his tour, Lady Gaga has to disappoint Detroit. As Lady Gaga announced yesterday that a Detroit show, a lot of those shows in Chicago, that was supposed to be today and tomorrow, in Hamilton, Ontario, has been postponed due to what they like to call synovitis, severe inflammation of the joints. Gaga's been on this North American leg of the sports with born this ray ball for about a month. And that's how long she's been having this injury. Gaga released a statement on these rescheduled performances, saying I am completely devastated and heart sick. I've been hiding this injury and in pain for my staff for a month. Pray that it would heal. But after Monday night's performance in Montreal, I could not walk. To the fans in Chicago, Detroit, and Hamilton, I hope you can forgive me as it is nearly impossible for me to forgive myself right now. I would do anything for you. I will hopefully heal as soon as possible and be 500% again, which is what you deserve. If I am correct, it's the first time God has to cancel a show due to ill health in three years. She had to cancel a show in Indianapolis, the Lafayette, Indiana, about three years ago during the first leg of the Monster Ball due to dehydration problems. I think other cancellations because of boycotts in Indonesia last year and equipment problems. So I don't think it's been a cancellation due to ill health in about three years for Gaga. So there you go. Gaga having to postpone three dates, actually four dates, of an upcoming full display ball because of joint problems. So uh, there you go. With that, get well, Gaga. And I feel bad for all those people who did have postponed tickets for that. For those shows, like I said, postponed dates for those shows Hi. have not been scheduled yet, but we'll finally find out those dates probably as soon as possible. Now, uh, got some news on the Elimination Chamber. Some new matches has been made in the last 24 hours concerning the Chamber pay-per-view. Two matches made for the main card and one match for the pre-game. First, the pre-game match has been named for the Chamber pay-per-view this Sunday, which will be the reunion of sorts of Team World Scholars. They'll be teaming up against the newly formed gimmicky team of Bordis Clay and Tenzai. Now, as I mentioned on Monday in my review of Raw, if you haven't seen it yet, I think Bordis Clay and Tenzai could be a team to be reckoned with if they were still monsters, not these gimmicky, silly dance freaks. Although, as I said, Tenzai slash Abbott's been a hip-hop hip one one time, but this is just weird now. But I'm glad they're putting back Team World Scholars back together. They broke up too soon. They should have been tag champs. Hopefully, this is not a temporary reunion. It's more of a permanent reunion. And two title matches have been announced for the pay-per-view. And I should have known this following what happened Sunday, I mean Monday on Wall, involving Miz's match with uh, Cody Rhodes. Antonio Cesaro in a rematch against the Miz, this time on the pay-per-view, not the pregame like the Wumble. Also, the useless Divas title on the line is Caitlyn Tamina have a match that's not a Lumberjill match. But gladly, it will be a match to be reckoned with, but it'll be a stupid match nonetheless, even though Tamina's a decent wrestler. So there you go. New matches made for the Chamber Pay-Per-View. Now I got, uh, gonna end with Modern Family PV for tonight. Uh, last week's Modern was very funny last week. Uh, two weeks ago, show before they went off like a week was very dramatic. Felt like watching a bad episode of Glee with too much drama. But it was back to the laughs last week with some good storylines in there involving uh, Jay trying to teach Mitch and Phil how to golf. It was a good, good episode last week, and hopefully they can keep up the momentum, especially after losing the Golden Globe. The girls a few weeks ago. Uh, speaking of girls, uh, Lena Dunham is on the cover of Rolling Stone this week. I'm subscribed to it, so there you go. So it's like weird that Modern's still one of the best shows despite losing the girls, but it didn't win the SAG Awards. So there you go. My number one comedy, Modern Family, in my opinion, 
tonight at 9 on ABC. See what funniness they bring tonight, especially Valentine's Day edition, as their alter egos of Phil and Claire both make awkward returns. <laughs> Valentine's, Day, Valentine's Day episodes have been very funny in the past, and their alter egos are very funny. Clive Bixby, I forgot Claire's alter ego's name. Forgot, forgot her name. Uh, that is it for the attack line for today. Thank you all very much for watching. That in mind, you have all been attacked by the news from Zach. See you all later. Yeah.